Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the nth derivative test and the proof for the nth derivative test. Okay, so what is this test first of all? This test is used to figure out whether a point x equal to a where the derivative of the function vanishes is a point of local maxima or a point of local minima or neither of the two. Okay, so let me write down this test for you in plain and simple words. So let's say there is a function f of x whose derivative at a vanishes, its double derivative at a also vanishes, and so on and so forth, till n th derivative at a also vanishes. Okay, but the n plus one th derivative at a does not vanish. So this is not equal to zero. So what can you conclude about the nature of this point where? the derivatives of these functions till nth derivative is vanishing. So is it a point of maxima? Is it a point of minima? Or is it neither of the two? Okay. So here, what do we see is first we see what is n. Okay. If n is odd, right? And you realize that the n plus 1th derivative at a is positive. Then it means at x equal to a, f of x has a local minima. Okay. And if the n plus 1 derivative at a is negative, then it implies at x equal to a, f of x has local maxima. Okay. So what happens when n is even then? If n is even, so let me write down that in the next step, which is going to come down below this. Okay. If n is even, then at x equal to a, f of x has neither a local maxima or a local minima. Okay, so what we are going to see in this video is what is the proof for this? Okay, so let's without wasting time move ahead with the proof. Okay, now we all know that we can expand a function using the Taylor's formula, right? What's the Taylor's formula? So assume that f of x has continuous derivatives up to an inclusive n plus 1th order. Okay, so here we are assuming that the function f of x has continuous derivatives till and up to inclusive of n plus 1th order. Then using the Taylor's formula, I can write down the function to be f of a plus x minus a f dash a plus x minus a squared by 2 factorial f double lash a. And let's say I go till x minus a to the power n by n factorial n -th derivative of the function at a. And then we'll write down the remainder here, which is x minus a to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial f n plus 1 -th derivative of xi. Okay, now what is xi? Xi is basically going to be a quantity which lies in the interval a to x. Okay. Uh, by the way, the last term is called the Langrange's form of the remainder when you're writing the Taylor's formula for a function. Okay. Now, given that your f dash a, f double dash a, all the way up till nth derivative of the function at a is zero, can we rewrite this formula as so let me call this as one. So one can be rewritten as, can be rewritten as, as f of x being equal to f of a plus x minus a to the power n plus one by n plus one factorial n plus one is derivative of the function at a. Okay. So the entire Taylor formula for the function reduces to this simple formula. Okay. Now, 
Here I'm going to tell my viewers something very important. When you say this is continuous, what does it mean? Right? What does it mean? It just means that this has the same sign as this okay where x lies in the neighborhood of a that means x basically lies in the neighborhood of a you can also write it like this mod x minus a is less than h okay so the meaning of the statement that n plus 1 at derivative at a is continuous is this okay so what this essentially means is that the n plus 1 derivative of the function at xi has the same sign as your n plus 1 derivative of the function at a okay so these two have the same sign okay this is very very important because this is going to be very useful in our further deduction of this n derivative test so here i'm going to take cases now so let me take a case which i discussed in our nth derivative test uh, algorithm so first case is let n be odd okay so i'm taking this case where my n is odd okay so this case n is odd so when n is odd it's obvious that n plus 1 is even correct which means that x minus a to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial, this guy will be positive. Correct. And here, let us take situation number, Roman number 1, where you are claiming that this guy is also positive. Okay, so this guy is positive. So what does it mean here? It means here that f of x which is equal to f of a plus x minus a to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 factorial n plus 1 derivative at a can be. So dear viewers, in this part of the video, I have made a small change which I would like to tell here that instead of writing n plus 1 derivative at xi, I have replaced it with n plus 1 derivative at a because what I am looking at is the sign of those quantities. Interpreted in this way that f of x minus f of a is equal to this quantity correct now since this is positive this is positive okay so can i say that f of x minus f of a is positive what does it mean then it means that f of x is greater than f of a right that means the points which are in the neighborhood of a have higher values as compared to f of a right that means the points in the neighborhood of x equal to a, or let's say points, have higher values, have higher values as compared to a, as compared to that at a, right? That clearly means, that clearly means at x equal to a, f of x, has a local minima yes or no okay so this was a situation where my n was odd and the n plus one derivative of the function at a is positive okay let's take roman number two condition what if my n plus one derivative at a is negative okay then what will happen now rewriting the same stuff f of x minus f of a that's going to be x to the x minus a to the power n plus 1 upon n plus 1 factorial n plus 1 derivative of f at a this guy is going to be positive because n plus 1 is going to be even and you raise even power on anything it's going to be positive and this fellow is going to be a negative now so the product is going to be a negative now correct what does this mean what does this mean? It means f of x minus f of a is negative, isn't it? 
which means f of x will be less than f of a. So what does this imply? The points in the neighborhood, the points in the neighborhood of x equal to a have lesser values, have lesser values as compared to that at a, right? To that at x equal to a, right? Which means at x equal to a, f of x has a local maxima, right? So dear viewers, it proves our, 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 this part of the nth derivative test rule, okay? So we are done with that. Let's move on to the next part. When n is even, what happens then? Okay, so let me go to the next part. So case number two, when n is even. Okay, so when n is even, n plus one will be odd, of course. Correct? Okay. Now let's look at this term, x minus a to the power of n plus one by n plus one, okay? Now this guy is going to be greater than zero if your x is greater than a, and this is going to be lesser than zero if your x is lesser than a. That's very obvious because when x is greater than a, x minus a is going to be positive. And if you raise it to an odd power, that is still going to give you a positive answer. And if x is lesser than a, x minus a will be negative. And the negative number raised to an odd power is going to give you a negative result. Okay. Now, let us take this as an opportunity to break this into two cases. So now let me break this scenario under the following cases. One is x greater than a, and at the same time, the n plus one derivative at a is greater than zero, okay? So in this case, f of x minus f of a will be a product of, a product of two positive quantities right so this will also be greater than zero and this will also be greater than zero okay which means f of x minus f of a is positive which means f of x is greater than f of a okay yes or no and if i take a situation where x is less than a and my n plus one derivative at a that is also positive then what will happen in this situation f of x minus f of a will be a product of one negative quantity and one positive quantity. That means your function f of x will be less than f of a, right? Okay, so what is happening in this case? Let us summarize. If the n plus one derivative at a is positive, it implies that your function value at a is higher than what it has at a value x which is smaller than it. So as you can see here, this part, right? And in turn, it has a lesser value than it has at a value which is higher than a. It means f of x is increasing at x equal to a. That means it is a function which is showing a monotonic character at x equal to a and such a point cannot be a point of maxima or a minima, okay? Now let me take the third situation where x is greater than a and n plus one derivative at a is negative, okay? In such a case, what is going to happen? Your f of x minus f of a can be written as x minus a to the power n plus one by n plus one factorial f n plus one derivative at a. Now this is a negative quantity and this is a positive quantity. So the product will be a negative quantity, which means f of x minus f of a is negative, which means f of a, f of x is less than f of a. Okay. And similarly, if I take the fourth condition where x is less than a and n plus one derivative at a is, is negative, then what is going to happen? In this situation, f of x minus f of a will now be a product of two negative quantities. That means this quantity as well as this quantity, they both will be negative, negative. Correct? Yes or no? So f of x minus f of a will be positive. 
which means f of x will be greater than f of a. Okay. So what do we conclude here is that if your n plus 1 derivative at a is negative, okay, then, then f of a minus h will have a higher value than f of a as you can see here. Okay, see x is less than a means it is a point to the left of a and that will have a higher value than f of a. And in turn, f of a will have a higher value than f of a plus h. So you can see here when x was greater than a, f of a was having a higher value than f of x, right? So what do we conclude in this case that f of x is decreasing at x equal to a? Decreasing at x equal to a. That means it is showing a monotonically decreasing character at x equal to a, right? So it cannot be a point of local maxima or local minima, right? So if you want, you can add these two conditions down over here when you are stating the nth derivative test that if your n is even and you realize that the n plus 1 derivative at a is positive, right? In this situation, the function is increasing at x equal to a. And if your n plus 1 derivative at a is negative, that means your function is decreasing at x equal to a. So I hope the n derivative statement as well as proof made sense to you. Thank you so much for watching.